The earlier sections of this course were foundational. They are meant to help us more deeply discuss the practical importance of evolution. They are meant to demonstrate that the examples presented in this class are not just stories, but rather intuitive conclusions. Along the way, these foundations have actually snuck in a few reasons why the study of evolution has practical importance. Now we know that the carriers of sickle cell blood disorder also have a degree of protection against malaria infections. To be fair, we could have seen that pattern without any real knowledge of evolution. But with our understanding of how evolution works, we can take that simple observation and we can understand the underlying biology of the disease. Within the framework of evolution, we can examine the gene causing sickle cell trait and see what aspect of the human genome is actually experiencing pressure from natural selection. Once we discover that gene, we may want to examine other variants of the gene along with genes with related functions to see if they too are under selective pressures. When we do this, we find that sickle cell results from a variant of a hemoglobin gene. Examining this further, we find related biological connections. For example, thalassemia, a recessive autosomal blood disorder, is also caused by a variant of a hemoglobin gene. This variant causes mild to severe anemia, but it also appears to provide resistance to malaria. This persistent pattern has led researchers to explore a large array of hemoglobin changes and their relationships to infectious disease. The practical outcome of these studies includes designing interventions, developing proper screening tools, and predicting geographic locations with higher disease risk based on current and historical knowledge of pressures from natural selection. You see, evolutionary theory is the glue that pulls this research together. It's the reality of evolution that reinforces the logical choices being made by the researchers. Our foundational lectures explain that one way to detect genes that have undergone noteworthy natural selection is to find alleles that strongly deviate from the baseline allele frequencies observed in populations. If frequencies deviate from that baseline more so than we could ever accept by chance alone, then we can assume with confidence that natural selection had a significant influence. We are doing evolutionary research and health research, but at the same time, in the next few lectures, we'll discuss other examples of how these evolution-based statistical tests explain unusual genetic disease risks. We'll take this a step further. If natural selection impacts health, can we use that knowledge to make humans stronger? Is that a practical benefit?